Hi, welcome to the small shed. This week on the cycle cart, I want to make a start on getting the engine mounts done. See you in a minute. Now the biggest problem on the cycle cart is, is getting this motor in. There's very little in the way of options I've got for placement if you like. Uh, but the other thing is that I've been a bit bothered about the idea of cantilevering the way to the engine out back from the cross member behind the cockpit. So um, I'm going to have a look at that, measure up, see what sort of room I've got and then make a start on getting some sort of framework to support the engine. So we'll see how we get on. So that's my uh, tail outline and as you can see there really is not a lot of room there at all to work with so uh, that will really ultimately be the arbiter of where the motor goes. I was, I'd love to get it as low as I can but the only place I can get it low is behind the back axle and I really you know think it's probably going to be unlikely because the axle's about here I think to get it in there so it may well be it's got to go above now is the time to go and find out and make a start on um, seeing what happens right so putting the back axle in has done what I thought it might it makes it so much easier to visualize where everything goes in terms of clearance and and everything else um, for a long while I've harbored thoughts about getting the engine underneath the axle but it, it really won't go unless you're running like 50 milligram clearance which I think is probably impractical so I've got to the point where I think I've got the solution um, with probably um, you know a morning's looking at and thinking about it because I've got this now fixed it enables me to ascertain the sort of height of where all the frame rails are and fixings that I'll need to get sorted out because I've got a cantilever some supports backwards and I think realistically even though they're cantilevered I can't come right the way back to here without some sort of support from underneath so I think I'm going to have to have a support across there which is something I didn't necessarily want to do because it will be vi visible from above where the tail is but that way the back of the um, supports for the engine will will be sort of supported at least underneath the engine and there'll be a little bit of a cantilever backwards and I think that'll be okay it is as I thought going to be extremely tight um, I can't really go much further back than that without starting to get into trouble with either the um, TAV takeoff or the carburetor. But that is doable. It it just really and that think of imagine that gearbox being over a bit. It's only there because I can just wedge it into behind the starter motor. But it'll be over about two or three inches so that that belt lies up with that one. And then the output shaft on the gearbox will drop down onto that chain wheel there. So the only real problem in any of that now, whether ever there's any doubt, is whether or not that will be okay in terms of getting a chain in there. Um, it's extremely tight. It's probably not a lot different to where the TAV was in, in terms of room. So I've got to take counsel from fellow cycle, car cycle carters on that one. Next step will be to get the support work in for it. And so what we'll have, I think, will be a couple of rails running backwards from that top rail there. And then there'll be a motor plate on top of that 10 mil thick. Okay, so I've got to the point where I'm finally getting onto the um, fixing the motor. 
and this is the, the bit that's sort of been mithering me probably the most of all of it um, because this will either work or it won't I think I think we're getting about there I, I think I've got the position about right in my head and just by propping it up on bits of wood so it's time to start and see how it looks if we actually do it with the real thing I've just screwed one of the bolts into the end of this aluminium that actually hold it together on the joints and if I don't do it up too tightly I should be able to slide it in without too much slop it won't be perfect but that's it, it will actually mean I can get it in I've got the centre line marked so effectively that's going to be the platform height for the motor I think now to deal with the bounce in it at the moment which there is undoubtedly um, that will get better if I have I'm thinking of having three lengths of this one either side to take the motor and that will give me the 80 mil fixings for the motor and then this other one will come on further out and make a rear tail support so that will work uh, what I've actually thought I might do is use another piece of 8040 underneath the rail screwed to the back rail there and then come back and just curve it up perhaps and that will be useful for a couple of things firstly it'll mean you can bound, mount the under tray to it because there's an under tray underneath the uh, tail section and it should give plenty of fixing then because it'll mean there's three vertical bolts on that back cross member holding the motor and already with nothing actually bolted up tight those two are just wedged in loose they're not attached in any way shape or form uh, they're just wedged in under that bit of oak that's going across there the top is still loose but it's made that rear mounting quite rigid already right so I'm a day further on or two days further on from when I last did anything on the back end of the cart uh, I've taken advice from the guys on the cycle carts forum who seem to think that I shouldn't have a problem with my idea of where I want to put the chain wheel so hopefully today I'm going to get some meaningful progress first of all I need to establish the length of this piece of rail um, that is determined effectively a support for the tail when it comes to, to be mounted on it'll screw down there and it'll mount on the back there as well so I want to get that length and to do that I'm back to the drawing back to my full size drawing that I did at the beginning which is proving invaluable and we'll have a look and see how that's going to work so this rail is going to be 40 millimeters on top of the existing frame rails it comes out from the back of the bulkhead out there so I've marked, I've extended the frame rail line, marked my 40mm above it. That back end has got like a very slight round on it and a, it's at a slight angle. So I've been in the shed and found a bit of old oak, I think it is, timber, that's already got a nice rounded, it's been a handrail or something I think, it's already got a nice rounded bit on it anyway. That will probably do me as a starting point for the what will effectively be the mould for the tail section that will go in there at a very slight angle and then we can just round off all the other bits when we join whatever I'm going to use, timber or whatever to make the tail shape before I glass fibre it so that effectively then sets me a length for that rail roughly it doesn't need to be exactly right but it's going to be close enough that will set me a length of 500 mil past the axle
Right, so top one cut to length, um, screw in it. I've got the next big double one underneath it cut. I've got to take the whole bulkhead out now to assemble this, so that will come next. We'll do that in a minute. But essentially, it will go under there and support it a bit more. And now all I need to do is just get these side piece uh, positions marked and then cut some rough lengths. I'll probably be about the same as that, I think. Tons of room for the disc brake now. On there I've got quite a bit of room to move that around. I'm okay with the clearance on the fan and the pull start. I'm very tight on that corner with the carburetor but I'm not too stressy about that. I can either, um, if I keep that carburetor I could just ease the shape of the tail slightly and just get me the extra 10 or 15 mil I need, uh, make it slightly longer and come out slightly more backwards. But really that's something I'm not going to worry about at the moment because the tail won't be even produced until I've got the thing running. I think I've pretty much resolved everything now. Um, if I put a vertical pillar coming off the rail from the back of the cart on the centre line there, I can mount this whole gearbox on a plate on the side and have an adjuster which will screw it up and down if I need to just to tighten or loosen the chain and then I'll put some slots in the mounts for the engine which I can move back and forth and adjust the tension on the belt. So I think I'm pretty much there, that's going to work okay, I think everything lines up as far as I can see at the moment with the, uh, the gears and the TAV. So what I'm going to do now is just measure up the size of the chain I'm going to need and we can get that ordered. And similarly I've got to get a new belt for the um, TAV because the one that comes with it is intended for it when it's on its normal back plate. We'll get those done. Just borrow my wife's um, tape measure, which is better than anything I've got because it's more flexible. I've got to have some adjustment up and down, so yeah, 900 mil perhaps for that. And then I need the centers for these two to get the right length of belt because the well, the TAV itself is too short. Um, that goes on a 170 mil centre, and these are at 
in inches so I might have to convert but the 245 mil nine and a half inches nine and three quarters again there's a little bit of adjustment here and there so it's the nearest I can get to nine and a half or nine and three quarters what I think that gives me is all of the packaging for the engine and gearbox pretty much within the rear shape that I've got um, I've got room for the disc brake on the other side I think there's plenty of room there and I'll just put another upright in there and mount the bracket off that uh, what I think I'll also do then is put in some ducts that will pick up drop just below the frame rail in there probably I don't know half an inch three quarters of an inch treading mill something like that which will pull air in underneath and if I curve those up virtually around the chain and bring them up to there somewhere the ducts either side that will pull air in which will be coming up here then because heat is going to be one of the problems getting rid of it and then we've got room down here to put maybe a pair of computer fans or something to pull that air back down and out through the back end along with the exhaust um, so that won't be a problem at the moment because if I'm going to run with it open it won't be a problem but um, it's something I'm trying to plan for and make sure we've got provision for it. Now pieces have arrived over the last few days and I think we're getting somewhere with the back end of it as well now. The I've got the longer TAV belt from Jiminy Carps which will allow me to have that sort of spacing for the gearbox this is all just propped up at the moment um, I've got the chain and that is showing pretty much what I'd hoped that it will fit where I want it to with a little bit of moving around of things I think it's feasible um, and I think I've got all of the mounting sort of ideas for the motor and the gearbox I need to get some aluminium or metal of some sort plate to both mount the reverse gearbox and the mount under there so I think we're pretty much there it's all just needs taking apart now and getting all the necessary bits of uh, spacer that like there's a 20 mil spacer got to go in there and that will go in and be bolted up into there there's a 40 mil on the other side that will go in and bolt up as well and that whole lot will then become basically a t-section in in aluminium all bolted together in all both top to bottom and side to side and bolted into that back frame so i think the whole thing will be pretty solid at that point and it will form an l section with that vertical couple of vertical pieces there which will carry the um, gearbox and probably a disc brake caliper uh, and anything else I need to up there petrol tank things like that so it's all coming together quite well at the moment I think right so having established pretty much where all the parts are going in the back end I'm just going to whip the motor off and the gearbox and take this whole back cross member back out again and stiffen it all up um, what it means is I can effectively set the whole thing up on the bench because that whole section can come in and out with four bolts to mount it now um, but I need to just now get these parts fixed vertically and horizontally with bolts so that the whole thing is a contiguous lump of metal so we'll whip the whole thing apart now having satisfied ourselves we're about there
Okay, so that's got the whole of the L section sorted and bolted together. I need to do a couple of things. I need to get one more core screw to fix this rail um, into the back into the back rail. At the moment, there's a bolt in there, but it's not the proper bolt, so that's that's not 100% sorted. Um, but I need to get some more metal ordered before I get the core screws because it's I don't want to pay six pound or two pound for a new core screw and 19 pound posted in packing which is what we get um, the top one also I've got to get a new bolt that needs a 150 mil bolt which I haven't got so I've just ordered that but this whole bottom section now is bolted that way it's bolted that way and it's all bolted into the the back rail so it's as solid as as anything now this whole thing is a totally rigid thing i've got a platform there i can mount a motor on um, and maybe slide back and forth on the plate i'm not quite sure yet but i've got the option if i want to uh, and the back is now strong enough to take the gearbox without there being any movement with it moving back and forth this is only a spacer at the moment this piece and that one so they can be taken out at will or altered it's just to keep this top bit bolted together but i can bolt that through at any height in any position to suit really but uh, that's pretty much it now so it's ready to go back into the cart uh, but I may in the meantime just mess around and, and get some brackets made and some fixings for the um, the motor and the um, gearbox but I need some thick aluminium for that I've got to get some on order this face here um, I will sort out that nut and bolt that will probably be recessed in because that is the reference line really of the chain almost I just want that chain to clear that sensibly and then the motor will just have the all the gears will run on that plane um, it's giving me a reference point to mount the, the gearbox so that the gear is just clear of there and the, uh, the motor itself is just clear of there and then I can just move the chain wheel in to suit as and when we get it fitted but I'm pleased with that that's made it a really solid rigid lump now it's reasonably heavy but I think it was always going to have to be the case um, I've still got this quandary about the whole thing holding in on four bolts um, to either side that's, the whole, that's all that's holding this thing in but I have always got the option to put a cross member in, cut out the bottom one of these rails and sit it down onto that if, if, if I find it's a problem. But I, think, I think we'll give it a try anyway, so here we go. Now I've been sort of marinating on how this whole assembly works for, well, weeks now. Um, and although this cantilever is solid enough i still think mechanically it would be nicer to have some support across here and i think my reservations about how that's going to work with being able to see it under the axle are pretty pointless when i look at what i've got for a body side i think if i stick a, a support in here somewhere maybe even that far back you'll hardly even see it in the t underneath the tail bearing in mind the tail is coming down right down to more or less below chassis level so you'll just see a tiny little bit of stuff sticking out there and I think for the amount of support that's going to provide more or less underneath the engine it double it gives me 50% more fixing because I'll have another bolt through there so instead of those two there'll now be three either side and I just think mechanically this is where function has to sort of score over form I think there's a point at which um, you've got to stop and think well is this going to work rather than is it going to look pretty so I'm going to put that in that of course means a total strip down of the whole thing 
to get to drill the chassis rails I've got to cut a piece out this is an 80 by 40 here so I can cut an 80 mil a 40 by 40 chunk out of it and it will sit down on it um, it's a bit of a shame in that if it were a two 40 40s you'd get a much better bottom surface than where the, it'll be cut about there I think so you won't quite get the support you, you'll just get it sitting on there but I think some support in there is much better than none at all so for the hopefully the last time I'm going to tear it back down to the chassis take the back cross member out I've got the bolts now that I needed a couple of bolts to finish all these fixings on here at the moment that's only a bit temporary and I can hopefully get it all ready to uh, to do the motor then and effectively once that's in it's a matter of mounting the motor to the plate the plate to this assembly and getting the gearbox mount on and we're we're more or less there at that point so let's get stripping it down again <laughs> Right, so that's got the back end sorted. I can now pick the cart up by that end and it's really rigid and solid. So I'm more than happy with that. I can now get on and get the gearbox mounted on the upright and get the motor plate on top of this. I've had a look and my body sides go about like that so you will see a very slight bit of support there but I think by the time the bodywork goes down either side of that you paint it black it's hidden by all sorts of things and you can't really get to see it because the bodywork is coming all the way down as well I mean effectively you're going to it's going to be like that sort of thing so I'm happy enough with that it's a compromise that I think is well worth making because I feel much more confident about the back end now being rigid and solid 
As I say, the fact that I can now just lift the whole of the back of the cart up on that without any flex or anything is comforting. So, on with mounting the gearbox, I think, and the motor. Okay, so we've got a platform in. It's a bit of a compromise, but then again, some of the things we're getting to now are all compromised, I think, to get the thing finished and to get it working and, and sort of strong enough to withstand being used rather than just looking good. Um, so we're on the way, I think. The next step will be to actually get the motor itself mounted, but we'll uh, get onto that in another week. Hope the video was of interest. Look forward to seeing you next week. We'll be doing something different on the cycle cart. I'll see you then. Bye.